Now this is what a 50 pound box of dental stone looks like. Inside there's a plastic liner and what I do is after I clip the tie off, I use a plastic cup of some kind and I dig around in the box because if you when you first open it up this powder will be compacted from shipping so it'll be hard to uh, mix in the water so I scrape around and fluff it up and I also mix it up because sometimes if you have a uh, pigment like if you get dark gray or medium gray you mix it up in the box it'll, it'll help mix the pigment up in it so you don't have areas that are darker than others now dental stone mixes differently than plaster of Paris. Uh, I've got my uh, reusable measuring cup and I'm going to slide a cup inside of it. For plaster of Paris we used two ounces of water for a normal size mold. But for the dental stone I'm only going to use one and a half ounces of water for a regular size mold. So I poured to about halfway between the one and the two and that's how much water we've got for this. Then I'm going to take my plastic cup that I dug around in the box for the dental stone and I'm going to start sprinkling that in. So we're just going to start sprinkling that in and I like to turn the cup around a little as I sprinkle it in so that as uh, you know you, you don't pour right on top of a mound of plaster that's already in there. Okay let me get a little bit more. And you'll see how that just starts soaking down into the water. So you want to sprinkle a little, let it soak down in, sprinkle a little, let it soak down in. Now at this point you notice that it's sinking in more slowly. It's taking a little longer time for that water to catch up. Now one thing about dental stone is uh, they mix something into here that makes the stone flow. In other words, it makes this stone stay more liquidy than plaster of Paris. So it will be thinner than plaster of Paris, yet still be just as strong. Now you see that we've got islands of powder on here that are not being soaked up? Right now we're just about the right amount. So there's some islands of dry plaster, yet there's kind of a little lake of water right over here. I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of powder. A little bit of powder over that lake of water there. Okay, so this is what it looks like just about right by eye. So if I take that up to the camera, if I can get the, you to look at that, you can see what we've got there. We see, a, you know, an island of a little bit of powder, and then we've got, uh, you know, it's still starting to soak in. Okay, let's see how many ounces we end up after adding the powder. If we put it back in our cup, it looks like we're sitting at about three and a half ounces after the powder is added. So with Merlin's Magic, we start with one and a half ounces of water and you add powder until you get about the three and a half ounce mark. That's a little different than the Plaster of Paris. If you remember Plaster of Paris, we started with two ounces of water and only added powder till we got about to the three and a half ounce mark. So with the Merlin's, you can add a lot more powder to the mix. It makes a stronger mix. So now that all the powder is added, let's go ahead and mix this up. Just take a spoon and you'll stir it up. And it'll start out to be a little bit thick here at first, but as you mix it up, it'll get thin. And that's the property that Merlin's Magic has. It's really considered a flow stone. In other words, it'll start to gel and thicken up. But as soon as you add a shearing force or vibration or some other sort of force to it, it will want to flow again. And that's one of the advantages of Merlin's Magic as opposed to just regular other dental stones, is that it will flow. The advantage is it flows into the mold easier. The disadvantage is it's a little harder to scrape because it stays liquid for so long. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pour this dental stone into the mold. Now, you want to spray it with some kind of uh, surfactant. Uh, this is the cheap stuff that we mixed up, but I'm going to use this, this uh, all more surfactant, or the Russman Debubbleizer works just as well. Like I said, this is about $20 a bottle, but it works slightly better than this. If you've got a school project, go ahead and use this. If you're a perfectionist and you want absolutely no air bubbles that you can possibly get, then this stuff probably works the best. Squirt over the whole face of the mold and sort of smack out the excess, and we're ready to pour it in. Now if you compare the pouring this in with the uh, other video on the Plaster of Paris, if you look at this, look at how that pours. Plaster of Paris did not pour like this. This actually is more of a liquid that you're pouring in. And you saw how little water we started out with to fill the same amount of mold. So it's surprising the difference you get between dental stone and Plaster of Paris. Now I'm going to fill it about that far. And I'm just going to tap the book on the table like we did with the Plaster of Paris. 
So just kind of smack the book on the table and you'll see the bubbles come to the surface. Now you almost don't even need to tap this thing at all. And this thing is going to, uh, let's go ahead and fill this up the rest of the way. And that's just about it. Only an ounce, an ounce and a half of water. Only about an ounce and a half of water uh, was enough to do it. And what I do with the rest of this, I pour the rest of this into the trash. Because if you let the rest of this harden in the cup, and you've got a big block of plaster in the bottom, then it's kind of hard to reuse that cup again. So what I'm going to do is tilt this down, and I'm just going to sort of pour this into the trash. Whatever you do, don't pour this down the sink. <laughs> Always pour it in a trash can. If you pour it in a sink, you will clog up your pipes, and you'll have to call a plumber. Now, as far as scraping the dental stone, dental stone stays liquid for a long time. It helps it get into the mold. It helps all your detail come out really nicely. But the problem is, it's very difficult to scrape because it's like trying to scrape off a cup of water. It's liquid, you scrape over it, and then the plaster flows back under the knife and it still humps up in the pockets. So what I do is I'll set a timer for five minutes and I will go ahead and just do something else. And when this timer goes off, then I'll scrape it. And what you want is this to thicken up a little bit, kind of like a soft margarine. If you can get it to that consistency, well, I guess I better start the timer. There we go. If you get it to that consistency, then uh, you'll have a lot better, a lot more level blocks. Okay, our five minute timer is going to go off in about 20 seconds here. Uh, you'll notice when you look at it, this, uh, this dental stone has kind of a thixotropic principle to it. In other words, it stays, it kind of gels. But as soon as you shake it or apply a shearing force to it or scrape it or stir it, it becomes sort of liquid again. Okay, so that's our five minutes. What I'm going to do is scrape across the top of it. And I'm just going to very lightly scrape the water. There's actually a layer of water on top of this. And the reason there's a layer of water on top of this, because it's mixed thinner than it really should be. But this is about the right amount of thickness we need it for the hobby industry. So I'm going to go across it. And you can kind of see the liquid water there. Now this looks like it's pretty thick. If you scrape across it, you go, wow, that was kind of thick. But after you scrape it, and it comes off the mold, then it starts to drip again. That's the thixotropic property. That's what's strange. It's like you, when you scrape across it, it feels thick. But after you scrape it off, then it runs. That's just one of the weird things about dental stone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of work back and forth and just kind of uh, scrape across this to, um, you know, loosen this from the top of the mold. And I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to just scrape the excess. And you notice how much more runny this is, even after five minutes, than the plaster of Paris. So I'm going to scrape across. Then I'm going to scrape across back. And like I said before, if you scrape across at a 45 degree angle, angle the knife this way and scrape across it. And it won't catch on pockets of the mold. Because you can scrape across, but on some molds you might be able to scrape those uh, pockets and the mold will snap back. That scraped really nice. I don't think I am even have to do anything else to that. But I'm just going to take my time and scrape across it. And that worked out just about right. Now since I scraped the mold, it's only been about 10 to 15 minutes. We set the timer for 5 minutes, scraped it. And now 10 to 15 minutes later, this thing is already set. So what you can do is just break off the excess here. And then, once again, like I did with Plaster of Paris, get yourself a, uh, a, a tray, or, or you can set it on newspaper, uh, on, on several sheets of newspaper overnight to suck the moisture out of it. But you can go ahead and then pop these blocks out. And these, I don't know if you can see, but uh, I could probably get them up close to the camera, but these uh, have no air bubbles. They've got, you know, nothing. They're, they're pretty much perfect. Without a vibration table, uh, without anything. Uh, and you notice, I don't know if you can notice on the bottom, some of them still have a little bit of a recess on the bottom of the blocks. I don't know if you can see that edge. Yeah, right there I think you can see that edge. And that's the difficulty in scraping with dental stone is sometimes you get just a slight, a very slight recess uh, on trying to get those bottoms flat. And I've got one more video I'm going to show that's another method of possibly, but 
usually that happens if you have kind of a larger area. If you've got like the back of a door or something that's wide. You'll notice on these smaller blocks, these one inch ones, they don't have any kind of recess. They don't have any kind of problem at all. They're, they're pretty much perfect.